Prince William might sever formal connections with the Church of England, making history as the first British monarch to do so in five centuries. Within the royal community, there is already discussion over the Prince of Wales's potential succession to the throne and his intention to assume the role of Supreme Governor of the Church of England. William loves to attend services at important times of the year, including Christmas and Easter, and he has a great deal of respect and admiration for the Church. However, he believes that except for not being a frequent worshipper, he is just like any other Briton and that has sparked rumours about whether he might think twice about abdicating the formal position that British kings have had since Henry VIII. Renowned royal author Robert Hardman addresses the subject in his intriguing new history of King Charles. Hardman describes William as following, In royal circles, it is no secret that he does not share the king's sense of the spiritual, let alone the late queen's unwavering devotion to the Anglican Church, in reference to their respective approaches to religion. His father is very spiritual and happy to talk about faith, but the prince is not, a top palace official said. Although he doesn't attend church every Sunday, most people in the nation don't either. He may visit throughout the holidays, but only during those times. Although he has a great deal of respect for the institutions, he does not naturally feel at ease in a religious setting. William, 41, is believed to only attend a handful of services per year, mostly related to formal engagements or on significant dates in the Christian calendar, such as weddings and christenings. He was confirmed into the Anglican religion in 1997 when he was 14 years old. The late Queen Elizabeth was a weekly churchgoer and a devoted Christian with a strong sense of religious responsibility. King Charles has always been a regular churchgoer, even though he has an interest in other religions, especially Islam. The William Revelation occurs at a time when popular indifference, especially among the younger generation, is already posing a danger to Christianity. As of late, just about 30% of the UK population belonged to a church, according to a recent survey by Church Statistics. If numbers continue to decline by the next year, membership is predicted to reach just 8.4% of the total population, or about 2.4 million people. The average weekly attendance at Church of England services in 2022 was 654,000, a decrease of 228,000 from the previous year. In that year, 36% of those who regularly attended Church of England services were 70 years of age or older, compared to less than 50% who were between the ages of 18 and 69, and just 18% who were 17 years of age or younger. But the monarchy and the Anglican Church have a special bond. Ever since Henry VIII broke with Rome in 1531, the sovereign has held the title of Defender of the Faith and Supreme Governor of the Church of England. They further pledged to uphold the Church in their coronation oath. On the Prime Minister's recommendation, the monarch appoints archbishops and bishops, taking into account the names recommended by a Church commission. Like parish priests, they are sworn to allegiance to the King at the time of appointment and are not allowed to leave without permission from the Queen. The General Synod the highest authority of the Church of England, is opened by the Sovereign every five years, and every law passed by it requires royal consent. The new book also shows that the King and his son have different opinions regarding their coronations. According to Hardman, William has stated that while he thought his father was brilliant, his will be more discreet, shorter, ideally around an hour and ten minutes, and less spiritual. Aides claim that the Prince of Wales is one of the least ideological people I have ever met, and that he will avoid the intellectuals and scholars his father prefers to associate with. William is described by another as pragmatic and serious, and not one to make lots of speeches. Although he wishes to be more conventional and cautious, he is inherently hesitant of becoming involved in controversy.
According to Hardman, observers who assert that King Charles would serve as a caretaker until his heir, the changemaker, assumes power are the one thing that irritates King Charles the most. According to those close to the king, this is clearly incorrect. You've got more experience to fall back on, and you will inevitably have more opinions when you start much later in life, explains Princess Anne. Annabel Elliot, the sister of Queen Camilla, concurs. People keep talking about how he's a caretaker, she says, and knowing that there would be a lot of changes, I don't see that at all. The king and his eldest son's living arrangements are another distinction. William has no intention of living in his father's Welsh property and will instead rent it out permanently, despite his strong commitment to his new work and ties to the region. He won't receive the same magnificent investiture like his father did in 1969 as Prince of Wales. However, the majority concur that this is a good thing, as there is no desire for any kind of major event in Wales. William has previously stated that he does not believe he will automatically succeed his father as head of the Commonwealth, and that the title should instead be divided among the member states. Nonetheless, some of their distinctions stem more from the fact that they are from different generations. It seems that William prefers box sets above reading, which is the king's favourite pastime. The Prince of Wales particularly enjoys superhero films, especially Deadpool, which is about a cunning mercenary. However, there are some things that tie father and son together, and they do get along better than they have in a long time. According to Hardman, William, his father, vehemently objected to watching The Crown. As one person close to him puts it, the prince rolls his eyes when people say that it's just drama. However, by criticizing, he won't increase the publicity for it. He dislikes the thought of constantly being perceived as a whiner. The Harry fiasco has also strengthened the bond between father and son, as the latter has learned to value his father's accomplishments, even though they are not organic farming enthusiasts. On the other hand, the king adores his daughter-in-law. According to a friend who speaks to the author, he thinks Catherine is doing a wonderful job, not just with her royal duties, but also bringing up his grandchildren. In the meantime, Charles III intends to cram in as much as possible and is quite happy to let genetics and the Almighty determine how long he reigns. The Princess Royal comments, You know, we don't always agree, and I'm closest in age to him. However, we both recognize the significance of the monarchy. That's something we both agree upon. It's realizing that cooperation among the team members is necessary to make it happen.